Okay, so for this lesson, uh, I've entitled this Finding Hope at the Pool. And this is a uh, fantastic uh, story. Uh, it's found in John chapter 5, uh, verses 2 through 18. And this is a story about how Jesus healed a lame man who had been lame and disabled for about uh, 38 years. It's a remarkable story because this man was um, just lost in despair and just had a great sense of hopelessness. And, uh, and you know, being disabled for that long, I mean, just imagine that and how people would, wouldn't care about him, wouldn't look at him, wouldn't help him. And then out of nowhere, it just seems like this man named Jesus shows up on the scene, heals the guy, tells him to, you know, take up his bed and walk. And he's miraculously healed, but so much more than that. He heals him spiritually. And then just the whole story reveals how Jesus truly is um, not just our healer, but he's the, the savior of the world and the son of God. This is an awesome story. Um, but before we actually get into uh, the scripture, uh, I want to tell you a true story. Uh, in the fall of 2017, uh, there is a Marine Corps veteran uh, by the name of Rob Jones. And uh, he had lost both of his legs to a landmine in Afghanistan. And uh, this is a, a true story. He, uh, he has uh, prosthetic running blades, and he ran 31 marathons in 31 different uh, cities um, in, in 31 days. So that is just remarkable. Now, to give you an idea of how far that is, that's 874 miles. That would be like running from Beaver Creek, Ohio to New Orleans. It's just remarkable. And so he wanted to inspire people that um, even though you've experienced tragedy or loss or some disability, that that, can't, that shouldn't stop you to try to reach your dreams and maybe just in a different way. And that uh, there, there's purpose in your pain. And that he tried to inspire people to see that that yes, you can uh, make this transition from active duty to civilian life and continue to live your life, um, especially uh, for the glory of God. And so many people followed him, followed his, in his footsteps as he went from uh, city to city. Well, as you know, um, modern medicine has helped um, many people overcome many different disabilities in life and that we praise God for the modern medicine that we have. Um, but imagine living in a day and time uh, as this man was uh, disabled for 38 years, no one noticing him, no one helping him into this pool of water where he might experience healing and he might um, experience um, this uh, miraculous power and that they believed that was in this pool of water, but yet no one helped him and he uh, never experienced any kind of healing. And then Jesus shows up and then heals the man and brings hope and brings healing um, to this man's life. So what I want you to see in this story is how uh, first there's three points. The first point is how Jesus turned this man's despair into hope. He turned this man's despair into hope. So we're going to look at John chapter 5 uh, verses 2 through 7 first and you can follow along as I read. All right, so it's John chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 2 through 7. Now, there is in Jerusalem um, by the Sheep Gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, uh, which has five roofed colonnades. Uh, and these lay a multitude of invalids, uh, blind, uh, lame, and paralyzed. <clears throat> One man was there who had, who had been there as an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a, a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm going, uh, another steps down before me. Okay, so this, this uh, story uh, starts with the description of this um, paralyzed man and how there's a, a lot of disabled people lying around this pool and they believe the superstition that this pool of water has some miraculous uh, elements and chemicals in this water that um, that the first person who can get into this water when it's stirred up uh, can be healed. And so they believed in this, uh, this superstition. Um, and yet Jesus um, shows up, you know, no one's helping him, no one notices him, uh, and no one helps this man into the water. Uh, for years, no one helped him. But yet Jesus shows up 
knows him. It says it says he knew him. That he'd been there for a long time. So Jesus is omniscient. He's he is the Son of God. He's the second person of the Trinity. So he knows that he had been lying there for a long time, and he knows that he's disabled. And he asks them the question, um, "Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed?" And um, he, he doesn't heal the guy uh, by getting him into the pool of water. He heals him by speaking to him, saying to him, uh, get up, uh, take up your mat, and walk. And so what he wanted this, this man to see is that uh, um, healing is not found in these waters. Because the man answered, instead of saying, yes, I would like to be healed, his answer was, I have no one who, who will put me into the pool when it's stirred up and I have to be the first one in there and I'm not, obviously I'm disabled. I can't get in there before everybody else. No one is, you know, thinking of me. Um, and, and this has been going on for years. And so he thinks all of his hope is getting into the water first. The water has to stir, be stirred up and that is where his hope is. And Jesus is trying to help him to see that you need to put your hope in me. I'm standing right in front of you. The healer, the savior, the son of God is right in front of you. And he doesn't force himself upon him. He's asking the question, do you want to be healed? Um, but yet he does this miraculous healing uh, for this man as an act of mercy and act of grace. And so he is helping this man to see your hope is not in the pool of water. You hope, your hope is in me and that you, had a, you have a much bigger need than just physical healing. You need uh, a savior as well. And so he turns his despair in to hope. And now he's going to help him to see in the second point that he needs more than just a healer. He needs a savior. So what I want you to see here uh, in point number two is Jesus moves this man from healing to holiness. He helps him to, uh, to not just walk physically, but now to walk spiritually. So we're going to look now at John chapter 5 verses 8 through 15. So turn there if you would, John chapter 5 verses 8 through 15. <clears throat> Jesus said to him, get up, take your bed and walk. And at once, immediately, the man was healed and he took up his bed and he walked. And so the Jews said to the man uh, who had been healed, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, uh, the man who healed me, that man said to me, take up your bed and walk. They asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, uh, for Jesus had withdrawn as there was a crowd in the place. Now verse 14 is a key verse. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. So there's a lot going on here. So what I want you to see first uh, in verse 8 is Jesus just spoke the words. He didn't tell him to get into uh, the pool of water. The water didn't heal him. Jesus has spoken words heal him. So Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. He is God. And so he spoke the world into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was light. So we know there is power in God's word. He just spoke the word to him, and the man... Uh, heard him, the man obeyed, the man was healed, and um, and he was healed before he even got up. It says so. So this uh, this healing took place, and you would you would have thought that this miracle would have revealed to the Jews that this is the guy that they have been praying for and waiting for for so long that this is going to be the Messiah. You would have thought that out of the compassion of their heart that they would have celebrated this man's healing. Here he had been disabled for 38 years, and now he's walking around. But no, they, they're not celebrating his healing, and they're not happy with Jesus that he healed the guy on the Sabbath day. So uh, they're, they're ticked at Jesus, and this starts, this, this kicks it out into motion now. This is the time where uh, their, their opinion of Jesus really turned negative, and they begin to hate Jesus. They begin to persecute Jesus, criticize him, slander him. And then the, uh, the pinnacle of that uh, was when they crucified him on the cross. So uh, what I want you to see is in verse 14, 
when um, when Jesus finds him and he points out to him, he says, hey, see, you are well. So he's revealing to the guy that, hey, I'm the one that healed you, and uh, you are healed physically, but now you're also healed spiritually. So he did more for him than just a uh, spiritual touch. He gave him a spiritual, uh, physical touch. He gave him a spiritual touch as well. He said, see, you're well. And then he says, sin no more. Now, he's not saying that he expects him to live a sinless life or a, or, a, or a perfect life. He knows that he can't be perfect. He's basically saying, you were once living in sin. Now you're going to uh, live for me. You're going to follow me. Now you were once uh, you know, living for yourself, and now I want you to walk towards me, walk in holiness, walk spiritually in this new life that I've given to you. And then he says that nothing worse may happen to you. So again, this is, he's not teaching karma. Like if you make a bad mistake, then um, God's going to zap you down. You know, you do something wrong, you do something bad, it's going to go bad for you. You know, bad consequences, bad decision. He's not teaching karma. What he means here is that, hey, it would be um, worse for you to die in your sins, even though you're healed physically, it would be worse for you to die in your sins than it would be to, let's say you were never healed, but yet you um, went to heaven because you were forgiven and you put your trust in Jesus. So it would be a lot worse for you to to die in your sins, even though you're healed physically, than it would be to if, if you were uh, disabled for the rest of your life, but yet you were to die and go to heaven. All right, so that's what he's teaching there. So, um, so now he is helping this man, hey, you're, you're healed physically, you can walk physically, but now I want you to walk spiritually, I am your savior, put your trust in me, I want you to walk in this newness of life, uh, walk in holiness now, walk in obedience to me as you trust, uh, trust in me as your savior. All right, the third point I want you to see is Jesus tears down these man-made rules about the Sabbath. Uh, and he tears down these rules so that we would see the true identity of Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, that he is. He wants us to see the deity of Christ. So now this is in John chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, okay? Follow along. Uh, and this was why the Jews was, were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My Father is working until now. And I am working. This is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill Jesus. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, um, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. So imagine this man has been healed now. He has been lame for 38 years. He's walking around. He is, he's overjoyed because he's walking uh, for the first time in decades. He's He's carrying his mat around, and he's no longer paralyzed, completely healed. And all these Jews could see was not his healing, not the wonderful things he can do now uh, by walking, but all they could see was that this man uh, broke their rules and, uh, and that Jesus was the one who healed him on the Sabbath day and was breaking their Sabbath laws. And they put these rules in, in there in place to control the people and, and control them with fear and everything and control them religiously. Because if you follow their rules, well, then that's the, that's the way of salvation, uh, following these rules. And so Jesus really ticked them off. Uh, this started, like I said, it just this is what got the snowball rolling here where they got a really negative opinion of Jesus and they began to persecute him and then ultimately crucified him. But Jesus, um, imagine if Jesus were to say to him, hey, you know, I am the son of God. I do have all power. I could heal you. But, you know, these man-made rules are in place, so we don't want to tick these people off. You know, we don't want to make them mad. So, you know, you're going to have to wait a few hours. You're going to have to wait until tomorrow. Um, you know, sorry about your suffering, but, um, you know, you're just going to have to wait on this healing. No, he is the son of God. He is rich in love and and, and abundant in compassion. He's going to do good even on the Sabbath day because Jesus said in Mark chapter 2 verse 27, the Sabbath was the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And so of course if your donkey is 
in a ditch, you can get your donkey out even though it's on the Sabbath day. So, of course, you can do good on the Sabbath. It's just that these, these Jews had a long list of rules that they came up with of, of do's and don'ts of what you, you know, what makes you religious and what makes you saved and what makes you right with God. And you have to follow these rules. And uh, Jesus broke down all those barriers and they did not like that at all. And all of this did was, was reveal he is the Messiah. He is the son of God. He has all power and he is perfect in love. And he uh, just reveals himself that uh, you no, know, it's God's laws that we need to follow. Jesus wasn't breaking any of God's laws. He was perfect. He was sinless, and it was just it just exposed their sinful heart. All right. So in closing, what I want you to see is a summation: is that here was this disabled man for 38 years, <clears throat> and he was lost in despair and lost in hopelessness. Um, other people didn't notice him weren't able to help him, the pool of water, couldn't heal him, and walks in walks this man named Jesus, shows him great compassion and love, doesn't just heal him physically, but heals him spiritually, tells him to get up and walk, he walks, he's made well, and now he says sin no more, not, uh, not calling him to sinless perfection, but calling him to walk in a new life, calling him to walk in holiness, follow me now as your savior, and then Jesus tears down these barriers, tears down these, um, these man-made rules that man has put into place. So you have to follow these rules in order to get with God. And Jesus is saying, no, you need to put your faith in me. I am the Savior. I am the Son of God. I am the Lord, and salvation is through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And so the big takeaway, again, is that we don't need a pool of water that's stirred up. We don't need to please man or fear man or follow man-made rules in order to be saved. We can be saved by the grace of God. We can walk in holiness. And we can put our trust in the Son of God. This man uh, was disabled for years. He had lost all hope. And maybe you're in a situation like that where you feel like it's a, it's a situation that's not changing. But in walks Jesus, and he can do the miraculous physically and also mainly spiritually that uh, where there is a desperate situation, he is the Savior, and he invites us to trust in him and to follow him, and he will remove our sins as far as the east is from the west, and we can have this living hope all because of Jesus Christ. The big question is, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? And the question is not just, do you want to be healed physically? But it's revealing that our hope should not be in anything other than Jesus Christ. And that he is the ultimate healer physically, but spiritually as well. He can save us from our sins and give us everlasting life. Will you trust in Jesus? Will you turn to him today? He is all that we need. He is our healer. He is our savior. He is the son of God. And so I hope that that um, is the case for you, that you have put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everybody that is watching. And thank you for this lesson, this great scripture in John chapter 5. And uh, we thank you that you are our healer. We thank you that you walk into people's lives unexpectedly and show mercy and grace when we don't earn it and when we don't deserve it and yet you love us and you can you can do the impossible you can change situations you can take situations that are tragic and that seem to be pointless seem to be hopeless and you can do the impossible you can do amazing things and you can not just change the situation physically but you can change us spiritually so that we see the suffering and the pain through your eyes and we can find purpose in the pain whether you take it away or not it doesn't matter you are in control you are good you are faithful and you're gonna help us and you ultimately bring ultimate healings spiritually when we put our faith in you and you remove all of our sins and our name is written in the Lamb's book of life and we thank you for that Lord thank you for being our Lord and Savior help us to live for you and proclaim your name to the glory of God no matter if that means persecution so be it we will follow you 
We want to turn from the world and we want to follow you, Lord. Uh, take up our cross and follow you. Deny ourselves and, and, and live for you. So thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, we pray that you'll bless every person that's listening and help them to live for you and put their faith in you. Thank you for your word. It is true. It's life-changing. So continue to, uh, to help us to live for you, and may you receive all the glory, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless you, and thank you for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.